Hello, welcome to Cloud Native Telco 2019. We're in London and I'm talking with Jonathan Stockdale, who is Head of Engineering at Amdocs Global Services. Jonathan, thanks for talking to us. Do you think CSPs can use cloud native technologies as they are for the next phase of network transformation? Or do they need adapting to new standards and new specifications? Uh, I, I think that the, the cloud native technologies at this point are absolutely mature enough to support uh, telcos. Uh, I think as telcos move forward, they need to uh, consider what is uh, differentiating, what are they differentiating on, and what's non-differentiating. And the things that are non-differentiating, they need to look to the communities like uh, CNCF and uh, open source and collaborate and, and really use that to accelerate uh, their velocity, as well as to mature and harden uh, the technologies themselves and then the parts that they want to focus on uh, leverage the standards that are there and then create any new standards to help them differentiate in those areas uh, themselves. Jonathan thanks for that. Um, NFE is taking somewhat longer and is costing rather more than was originally anticipated. How do we avoid the same thing happening with cloud native? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think the, the first thing structurally is to uh, consider um, the uh, differentiated behaviors and the non-differentiated behaviors that the uh, telcos want to, to work on. Uh, leverage the community for the non-differentiated behaviors, working with uh, uh, organizations like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF, and uh, use the existing technologies that have been proven at web scale, uh, like Kubernetes, and, and stand on those. Uh, and then build the differentiated uh, behaviors on top of those. Uh, with that, look to define the behaviors and um, isolate them and stand up different groups and teams to address each one of those and allow them to innovate independently. Okay, so how do you convince the board, a board of directors that cloud native is the way forward for a CSP? So the, the, the way to convince the board uh, from our approach when we've gone through cloud transformations uh, is to have a strong 90 and three year plan. Uh, and with that, a quick win in the first 90 days, uh, followed by an evolutionary approach to uh, the transformation and, and, and with that uh, being very open and honest about the effort it's going to take um, and defining it. Uh, sometimes boards don't want to hear, it's going to take four years to do this. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an investment they don't want to hear about, um, but we have to address that and show them how they're going to get wins every step of the way. Um, so with that, looking in your evolutionary approach, Start with the things that add the most value uh, for the business as a whole, not necessarily the most value to the development teams uh, in their development process, but looking holistically at the business. So um, last week at, at KubeCon, uh, a big message that they had was um, the uh, service mesh first approach. And if you think about this in a, uh, in a telco, it makes a lot of sense that the very first thing you need to think about when you're going to call native is how the different systems are going to be talking to each other before you get to containers and before uh, you get to microservices is let's understand the dependencies uh, and, and have a consistent standard place for that. So that's the first cloud native evolution that I would focus on. And then the second one is looking towards containerization uh, and then lastly followed by microservices. When you go to microservices, you have to remember why that they were put in place and the core principles. And the core principles behind microservices is, is to address, it's an engineering problem to address a social problem. And the social problem is teams need to move independently uh, and in order to deliver their business value. So you start by building a business blueprint about how you can uh, open up and, and, and allow teams to move independently. Um, the, the mantra that I use is, is the architecture architecture should follow the business and then the teams follow the architecture. And by starting with that clear business blueprint and pulling all team members in, then you can start to really leverage and, and build that approach. Um, so going back to the question of, you know, how do we um, 
demonstrate to boards the value of going cloud native. I think it's to show you know, the holistic approach, how the business is going to be transformed, and then what's the result, and then looking at the evolutionary approach that we have um, to, to actually get the most benefit er as early as possible that's directly aligned to their growth strategy. Uh, so that last part I put at the end I hadn't talked about, but the growth strategy, what, what I mean by that is uh, looking at the investment that they're making and the value that they're going to get and tying the cloud native approach to that uh, and showing that for a certain amount of investment, they're going to get a certain amount of growth and that's going to drive the business forward. Uh, moving on, how engaged are you at Amdocs Global Services with cloud native technologies? I've been working with uh, cloud native technologies uh, for seven, eight years now, so I'm deeply invested in it. Um, as far as the, you know, the services at Amdocs, we are, are focused in working with customers and, and helping them define their, their problems uh, and uh, develop solutions. We are, are very much uh, embedded in cloud native as the approach because we believe it's the sound architectural and a uh, way to approach the business to solve business problems. Um, the overall, Amdox is, has embraced uh, cloud native through their DevOps transformation uh, and has used it to develop their, their next generation uh, product line. Are they disruptive to your existing business model or complementary to it? Uh, yes, yeah. so um, for in services, um, we've been working in cloud native for, for a long time, so our business model is aligned with it. Um, for our customers, it can have a very disruptive approach um, in, in the organization, and the disruption happens of how teams are working together and then what they're looking to differentiate in, in the marketplace. Uh, so we use cloud native to help define the business behaviors uh, and help the organization identify which behaviors they want to differentiate in the marketplace. So, you know, do they want to have the very best process uh, for uh, paying their bill or do they want to have the very best customer experience and looking at that and then taking the cloud native technologies and using that to reorganize the teams, uh, reorganize the technology and enable them to deliver the fastest value uh, with the least amount of effort. And, and that's the ultimate goal in, in how cloud native can help a business is to uh, amplify the value and minimize the cost. Jonathan, what is the level, do you think, of cloud native knowledge and awareness that you see among your telco customers? I think there is an awareness uh, of the technologies uh, and the, uh, the, the fact that other industries are, are leveraging them. Um, Kubernetes, uh, containers, uh, microservices, uh, even DevOps, uh, I think the, there's much less awareness of how to make the change uh, and how to actually engineer uh, the, the business overall and how to, how to reap the benefits of those technologies. Uh, so specifically what I, what I mean is that uh, teams will run towards the te technologies, they'll embrace them, uh, and what they do oftentimes is they recreate the same architecture, uh, the same setups that they have on-prem in the cloud. So they've now taken their existing applications, uh, moved them to the cloud, and then when they go to decompose them, they break them into a thousand little pieces, um, but they still have all the dependencies that they had before, uh, and sometimes have actually made the problem worse by having introducing more dependencies. Uh, so that level of awareness is, is much, much lower. What we see and what where companies are successful is where they're able to decompose their business into the sets of behaviors they want to differentiate in, uh, uh, separate them from the behaviors they don't want to differentiate in, uh, and then build their architecture around them, which allows them to move software independently. Uh, they're able to address the technology problems through uh, the uh, features that Cloud Native gives them, scalability, security, uh, automation, uh, and deliver software. And CSPs need to start uh, uh, heading into Cloud Native or start their, their cloud approach uh, by uh, decomposing their business into separate behaviors uh, and looking at how they want to innovate and how they want to differentiate in the marketplace and organizing their teams around those behaviors themselves. Um, with that, they need to take some of their best engineering teams uh, and devote them to building the tools for their engineers to develop software. Um, by focusing on quality 
from a engineering perspective and enabling teams to deliver, uh, they will reduce the overall cost for delivery as well as make sure that teams are able to drive and, and move forward. Uh, also, by focusing on the tooling and the platforms, it allows them to bring, uh, to have uh, commodity teams come in and develop features and to build uh, for, their, um, for their infrastructure. How important is cloud native for telcos? Uh, the importance for uh, cloud native, I think, for telcos is uh, at this point twofold. One is to reduce cost, uh, and two uh, is to increase the speed of innovation. Uh, so, looking at those two um, separately, uh, I think that the, there will be a horizon uh, where the cost of the data center uh, exceeds the cost of the cloud. When we're we're close to that point now. Uh, that's not the time that uh, telcos will move to the cloud. The telcos will move to the cloud at the next horizon, which is where it's cheaper to actually do the migration to the cloud and pay the, pay the cost of the cloud than it is to be in the data center. So these horizons happen when they need to renew hardware or they need to renew leases in the data center. So uh, at that time, uh, telcos are interested in, in, in when they move to the cloud to do it in the most effective manner. So um, there's uh, six R's for uh, how to move to the cloud, uh, replatform, rehost, uh, and refactor are, are the main ones that you look at or retire. So as telcos are interested in moving to the cloud, you know, deciding whether to, to retire the, uh, the application, replace it with something new, or to uh, just simply move it uh, and use the benefits of the cheaper hosting at the cloud with rehosting, or to replatform, which is to just take and go ahead and uh, bring the application over and optimize it some to bring the cost down, uh, as well as to increase some potential value in, in, in delivery. So as far as cloud native and its value for the telco industry, I think that from a cost perspective, those are the core principles of when and where they'll do it. Uh, I think that we're at that time in the industry now. So I think companies are, are looking to move to the cloud uh, and one of their primary motivating factors is to reduce cost. The other side of the, 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 the top line is to increase innovation. In a lot of ways, especially in greenfield apps, uh, IoT and analytics, uh, telcos have already moved to the cloud and, and are leveraging its core benefits. Um, the rest of the applications, I think that they'll start to uh, refactor their applications when they hold back the new innovation uh, and when they um, need to, uh, to actually change the, the core uh, software that they're, they're moving um, uh, to uh, drive further innovation. Jonathan Stockdale, that was an incisive interview. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.